Hey guys, Michael Berula here. It's raining here and uh, looks like there will be snow. So it's great time to do another episode of Unknown War. In today's episode we will talk about uh, Godfrey's Rebellion, but mostly about origin of the story and how it started. My whole project about Unknown War of Ida. What will you see is my oldest uh, illustrations and description how I started my illustrated book. All concept uh, changed from RTS game idea. If you watched my world building series, you will see how lore has changed. This will be a longer video, so sit tight and let's do it. Eight years ago, when I lie in hospital and could not move, I have nothing to do except reading Anglo-Saxon chronicles, comics, and I had also my sketchbook with me. Then I saw this picture and in that moment I got idea, just fantasy. As I lie in crippling pain, my mind traveled to this fantasy world. I have spent some time sketching and developing this idea. I was keeping this fantasy for eight years in my mind and I have finally started working on this project uh, last year, which is called Godfrey's Rebellion. Tale of Baron, who rebelled against his kingdom. In the end, he lost and story is told by winner. Welcome to campaign map of Godfrey's Rebellion. Player start as Prince Lothar, who is returning from his travels to reclaim Umbrian kingdom on the south. In the first mission, Lothar must repel rebels and mercenaries of Baron Godfrey, unite all Southland and conquer Baron stronghold on the northwest. But great unknown horde of Morks and Froblins rising on the east. Godfrey and Lothar must unite their armies and stand together against new common enemy. But Lothar have other secret plans. Main future of this game design or concept uh, was player could equip his unit as he wish. Player will make armor and weapons from various resources and he can choose how his recruits will be armed with spears, swords, shields, bows, chainmail and so on. Mix them as he wish. Player can make it in that way light and fast or heavy and slow infantry or cavalry. He can also breed horses for riders. In campaign against Baron Godfrey, Prince Lothar can hire mercenaries from sound lands of Turan. I was planning to draw a wall fiction of Turan as some kind of DLC campaign map. By the way, I am planning to work on Turan culture for story set after Great Flood in the times of I called Dark Ages of Ida. As Prince Lothar traveled to southern lands of Turan, he became guest and good friend with Caliph Rion, leader of Turan people. Obviously, there was inspiration from medieval Saracens, as Western chronicles call them Turks, on the other hand call them Crusaders as Franks. There was idea about three main factions of Godfrey's Rebellion game. Rebels, which are now called Silurians, inspired by Saxons and Celts. Ambers, inspired by late Roman army and Normans. And Morks and Froblins, or like Horde faction. Morks' design was based on Asia warriors, mainly on Japanese and Mongols, and I am not still sure about their name, so it's still work in progress. For Baron Godfrey, I haven't clear idea if I should make him more like Viking or like Knight. I still cannot decide which armor suits him better. I like idea of plate gothic armor as he is veteran warrior knight, but lore is set in early medieval times. By the way, which one you like more? So another quick sketch and exploration of uh, Cavalry during Godfrey's Rebellion. As I said before, inspiration for these soldiers were Normans and early medieval period. I was thinking about drawing cavalrymen for Umbria 
and wonder if rebels got some type of medium cavalry too. Rebels are infantry focused because these men are from wood plants and their primary work is harvesting wood, which they export to Umbria. Surely, rebels used horses for transporting wood in forests. During rebellion, Baron Godfrey needs to deal with Umbrian cavalry, his army using horses only for scouting and flank attacks. He cannot match with Umbrian knights. In this situation, Baron hired veteran mercenaries with spears and pikes to stop Umbrian cavalry charge. Let's move a little bit to story before rebellion, main story of Godfrey rebellion's beginning. 200 years after rule of King Sigismund the Unifier, opening prologue mission take place in his last battle against Horde of Morks. Strong and wise Sigismund, according to Lore, unified all Umbrian people and built great wall between two mountains against all invading armies and secured that South Umbria for living in prosperity. Umbrian soldiers were soft farmers but well equipped with iron armor and weapons. Meanwhile, rebels living in the north forest and mountain were naturally using axes but light leather armor and round wooden shields. All armies used different weapons. Rebels had mercenaries with maces which is excellent weapon for destroying armor, helmets and shields. Umbrians on the other hand had Duran mercenaries with their famous archers and scimitars. Later, son of the King Herald and future ruler of Umbria was Lothar, so called Conqueror. He spent his youth in southern lands of Turan and he learned wisdom and cunning as well as military tactics. He also met their Princess Yella, which he fell in love. Lothar fought in Turan against local bandits and together with Yala they fought in the trade wars against Argives. When Lothar returned to home he found out that Baron Godfrey rise up against King Harold. Lothar gathered army and ended the rebellion in a series of battles, but true enemy was about to be revealed. As soon as Godfrey's rebellion started, peasants take up axes and hunting spears. There were several Umbrian knights and raiders patrolling around the forest in Siluria. Rebels captured half of them and keep them for a ransom. Other half managed to escape. Few of them was wounded. A report says only one knight was killed during skirmish and he fell from a horse and broke his neck. Here is a map during Godfrey's rebellion. It was my first map still in progress, but it gives me some ideas about this world and people. If you check out my other videos, you already know what's going on in unknown world. So my thoughts go deeper to lore. My world grows. It all started as idea RTS game with story of rebellion on Umbrian or more precisely Silurian island. Now I am writing and drawing wall history of nations for all continents and cultures. I have two more fantasy stories stored in my head and sketchbook for over 12 years, not just for uh, rebellion. Finally, it came together like a puzzle and these stories was set in this world. You may already know about Belovesus, Prince Tolan, and Aquila Conquest and other stories. Fourth new faction for Godfrey's Rebellion was Rians, during the first with Romals, which is now called Tengri, before the Great Flood, that divide the unknown world. The King Rhesus sent considerable detachment of soldiers to cut off the Tengri army. The rivers became flooded and warriors found themselves in the enemy territory without the possibility of returning home. These men built new stronghold in foreign region where they settled. They built the fort of Blackstone from the nearby mountains. Rians burned forests and plant fields on the ashes. 
because they had lost their homeland and had no king, they called themselves Sons of Rea, according to their Goddess of Fire and Sun. When was King Dark Aquila assassinated, as someone says, one of his son, Prince Amber, was unjustly sent to exile. Amber, with his small loyal company, settled in the north land of Silurians, and he rebuilt old Silurian fortress and made there his new stronghold. Time passed, and after cataclysmic events known as Great Flood, Umbrian land was cut off from rest of the continent by water. Between Umbrians and native Silurians started growing hatred, which eventually led to Godfrey's rebellion. But before that, there was a king Sigismund, later known as King Unifier, who settled all quarrels between these two bright people. After civil war and many years of conquest, Sigismund managed to unify all Umbrian and Silurian land. He built so-called Sigismund's Wall between two mountain ridges as defense against problems and other enemies. Sigismund maintained a loyal retinue of 500 men. These warriors were recruited from the ranks of the strongest and bravest men of Umbria and Silvoria. Soldiers served not only as elite shock infantry but also as horsemen who readily rode wherever it was needed through the wall kingdom. In the times of need, Sigismund could muster up 2,000 fighters. Most of these levies were Umbrian farmers or Silurian woodcutters, armed with spears and axes, with short swords or daggers, and clad in leather or iron, fighting in shield wall formation. They were a formidable force which can hold the line and give time to Sigismund retinue to seize victory with fierce charge. Speaking of development of my illustrated book, here are a few concept art from 2020, when Godfrey's Rebellion was designed as old-school real-time strategy game. In the first picture there is uh, Umbrian Soldier, a unit. As a player, if you want to make soldiers, you need to build several buildings where you would harvest and produce various resources and tools. Then you would send recruit or a villager to the barracks. You could equip recruit with weapons and armor of your choice and produce that soldiers and army as you wish without any restrictions. On second picture there is a froblin, frog-like goblin living in the swamps that is low-cost basic soldier and villager for a second orc or now called morks faction. On another picture are several Umbrian buildings such as lumber camp, iron mine, farm and town center. Picture from bird eyed view is on structure, wood cutter hut near forest and lumberjack cutting trees for wood, tools, weapons and building material. Let's take a look on Froblin. What if the Froblins are prehistoric people? who remain hidden in the misty Silurian swamps. People who may have seen them described hideous creatures, quick, skinny with big eyes, jumping out of the mud and reeds and using poison and traps, hidden in the stinking puddles. I have nothing new to say about Froblins, which wasn't already told, just some part of design were inspired by mixing Eastern, African and Southern Asian cultures. That cape he wears is made from fish, skin and reeds. In Taiwan, natives used armor from dried fishes and other materials. Main goal of designing this character was to mix fantasy frog and goblin from older ideas into the human swampy stealth dweller. For last picture, there is an updated illustration of Lothar of Umbria. It has been years since the last time I was working on original story from Unknown World, Godfrey's Rebellion. As I say, Prince Lothar spent his youth in Kingdom of Turan, where he learned much wisdom of peace and warfare, and with his spouse, Turanian Princess Yala, fought side by side in trade wars against Argos. 
when rebellion in Umbria broke out and Baron Godfrey with his rebellion Silurians lay siege on Umbrian main castle, Lothar came back to save his king father Harold and his future kingdom. Also you can spot that Lothar has eagle helmet from legendary King Tar Aquila. His helmet brought to Siluria Prince Amber, son of Aquila, when Lothar suppressed rebellion. Froblins start to creeping from their swamps and Lothar and Godfrey join their forces and try to cross swamps and invade unknown land of Marks behind it. But that story for another times. So my dude, that's it. I hope you are not confused from constantly changing ideas about origin of Godfrey's rebellion. I needed to gather my old writings for uh, making this video, so it was also confusing for me as well, because I needed my old ideas rewrite to English, which took me so much time. And I don't even talk how much time took me to edit this video. So give me a few likes and subscribe for more, if you enjoy it. Also check out my older character designs videos here on my YouTube. I am documenting all my progress. Hope you like it and gives you some inspiration for your own project. And hope you will find it useful. I love you all and see you next time.